Physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer is sometimes called the father of the atomic bomb. Reflecting on the first ever atom bomb test, he quoted from Hindu scripture, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. But how close did Oppenheimer come to actually destroying the world? There was a live debate among physicists in the Manhattan Project about whether life on Earth would survive the world's first nuclear test. The worry was that a nuclear explosion could set the Earth's entire atmosphere on fire by beginning a nuclear chain reaction in nitrogen in the air. I really enjoyed this nod to that worry in the trailer for Christopher Nolan's new Oppenheimer movie. Are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world? Chances are near zero. Near zero. What do you want from theory alone? Zero would be nice. So, could this have happened? Let's go back a few steps. That first nuclear explosion was known as the Trinity Test, and it produced about as much energy as 25 tonnes of TNT. 25,000 kilograms of conventional explosives. But this energy was produced by a ball of 6 kilograms of plutonium, just a few centimetres across. All of that energy concentrated in such a tiny space meant it was probably the hottest thing ever produced in the history of planet Earth to that point. The question is, would that be hot enough to turn the entire atmosphere into a thermonuclear inferno? If you smash two nitrogen atoms together fast enough, you can create a magnesium atom plus some energy. And if that energy can make the air even hotter and cause more nitrogen atoms to fuse, you'd get a runaway reaction that could tear through the entire atmosphere. Even worse, there are quite a few other options fusion-wise. For example, the water in the ocean is H2O, and H, hydrogen, is what the sun uses for nuclear fusion. Could the atmosphere turning into a nuclear fireball set off a fusion chain reaction in the ocean too, releasing enough energy to vaporise the entire surface of the Earth? This risk was first imagined in 1942, three years before the Trinity test. And scientists took the risk seriously. A few theoretical physicists set about calculating how likely it was to happen. Their conclusion, in the words of theoretical physicist Hans Bethe, is incredibly impossible. <laughs> they calculated it would take several dozen Olympic swimming pools worth of air, heated to several billion degrees, to cause a self-sustaining chain reaction, which was wildly implausible. And the good news is, they were right. Temperatures, even at the moment a plutonium bomb explodes, only reach a few tens of millions of degrees. It does sound a bit weird to say only about a temperature that's hotter than the centre of the sun, but we now understand that this is nowhere near hot enough to fuse nitrogen. And we know this both theoretically and experimentally. The biggest nuclear bomb ever detonated was the Soviet Tsar Bomber in 1961. It was 2,000 times more powerful than the Trinity test. And the fact that I'm telling you this demonstrates that even this ridiculous nuclear monstrosity was unable to set the atmosphere alight. But while history has proven the incredible brains of the Manhattan Project right with hindsight, were they right to detonate it, given what they knew at the time? Physics is hard, and scientists haven't always got it right, even when the stakes are incredibly high. A terrible example of this was another nuclear test a decade later, called Castle Bravo. The expected yield of this test was 6 megatons of TNT. That's still 250 times more powerful than the Trinity test. But the actual explosion was 15 megatons, three times higher than expected, and a staggering 600 times more powerful than the first nuclear weapons. It created the worst radiological disaster in US history, causing massive contamination of local islands and their inhabitants, US naval vessels, and a Japanese fishing boat that just happened to be in the area. And the radioactive fallout spread across the globe, causing an international incident. The tragedy at Castle Bravo, and common sense, shows us that we can never be 100% sure of anything based purely on theoretical calculations. So, if you were in Oppenheimer's position, with very strong but entirely theoretical arguments that the atmosphere wouldn't be set on nuclear fire, would you have let the Trinity test go ahead? And this is a question that we as a society are going to have to deal with all the time, at varying levels of risk and reward. Should we allow deep sea mining, when we don't fully understand the implications of destroying what might be one of the last pristine ecosystems on the planet? Could we reach a climate tipping point 
where we cross some temperature threshold and cause global warming to suddenly and rapidly accelerate. Current climate models reassuringly suggest that this is very unlikely. But how reassured should we be by this? Or might it be better to add a safety factor and cut back our carbon emissions just a little faster, just in case? Some kinds of virology research run the risk of finding and then accidentally releasing, or maybe even creating, what could be the next pandemic. How happy are we with the safety measures at labs doing this kind of work? And would it be better if some of it was just banned entirely? And artificial intelligence researchers are worried that a model that achieved general intelligence might destroy humans or, or life on Earth. Others dismiss these worries as scaremongering. But how sure do you want to be that the next AI chatbot isn't generally intelligent, just in case, before we switch it on? Modern technology will give us more Oppenheimer moments in the coming decades. And what's different and scarier is that some of these, like biotech or AI, might one day soon be able to be done in someone's basement, rather than needing billions of dollars and thousands of scientists to create. We need to approach these current and future challenges like Oppenheimer did. Take strange but potentially huge risks seriously. Do the calculations and trust the science, but make sure there's a comfortable margin of error especially if what we're doing could set the whole planet on fire. And if you want to know why I think artificial intelligence could be our next Oppenheimer moment, you might enjoy this video.